Shalom, giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutation as always to the elect. And I wanted to get into this parable in Genesis, the third chapter and the 15th verse. I was just having a, a conversation with the uh, fellow brother and priest, uh, Tazama, in the Great Millstone Dallas camp. And uh, from time to time, we send each other scriptures and uh, particular things we may find. And he uh, sent me a link in the scriptures to how when you read Genesis 3 and 15, it speaks of how the serpent would bruise our heel. Okay, and we'll read it. Um, this is Genesis, uh, the third chapter in the 15th verse. And this is the Lord speaking to the serpent okay which represents the seed of satan on the earth which came as cain and then came back you know uh, after the flood as esau edom okay through isaac and um since that point you know um in this earth there has been some serious friction between us and them and why well it was prophesied it was ordained Genesis 3 and 15 and I will put enmity between thee and the woman now enmity means controversy let's just look it up right here real quick enmity it says the uh, state of feeling or being actively opposed or hostile to someone or something hostility animosity friction all right antipathy animus acronomy bitterness rancor resentment aversion ill meaning bad you know and t antagonism so there has been some serious animosity between the so-called white race which are the edomites and you so-called negroes latinos and native american which are the israelites and how can that be explained according to the holy scriptures does the holy scriptures go silent on it well no the holy scriptures prophesied of it and ordained it okay all of this race uh, uh racial tension and, and and that you see in the planet earth it was ordained of the holy scriptures man nothing in this world is operating outside of the heavenly father's doings all right as the scriptures say men's goings are of the lord how then can a man understand his own way like these Edomites hate us so much, but a lot of them don't know why. It's written in their members to hate you. Okay? So the Lord told the serpent, which was a man, a nation of people on the earth at this time, that caused the chosen seed who have the laws. All right? Adam, uh, and then, you know, that life that was breathed into Adam, he eventually passed down to Eve, which is symbolic of the church, the Israelites the chosen seed the only people on the planet earth in whom the lord gave his ways to okay the serpent came and gave that seed another philosophy as he's always done as he's doing until this day he's throwing you israelites off all right via his uh philosophies his wine i will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed okay and it shall bruise thy head meaning we will eventually one day bruise their head okay and thou shall bruise his heel now which which is worse a head injury or a heel injury well if your head is crushed which that's what the lord prescribes that he's going to do all right to the head of the wicked then you through man you're out of there and we're going to get into the bruising of the head all right as well as the bruising of the hill okay and we'll start with how they bruised our hill but first let's look up this word bruised okay in the hebrew to bruise means shawap all right shawap it means to bruise to crush to gaze upon desire seize strike out to fall upon now you'll hear you know stories or particular ancient uh, sayings where you you'll hear well he fell upon him 
or the house of Israel fell upon this particular nation or this particular nation fell upon the house of Israel. What does that mean? All right, that means that they took them down. All right, and I um, looked it up, this phrase, to fall upon, it means to attack or take hold of somebody or something with a lot of energy and enthusiasm. <laughs> okay, and, and um, these Edomites, all right, the seed of the serpent, which we understand what the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman is via prophecy. As a matter of fact, let's get that in Revelation, the 12th chapter. Okay, Revelation 12. All right, now when you read this whole chapter, it's speaking of the ancient Roman Empire and how they came against the Israelites, how they came after the seed that came out of them, which was Yahawashai. All right, and that red dragon here in this story is known basically as the Roman Empire, all right? And you know that as you read it because Herod was the one who tried to kill the man-child in which the woman conceived. The Lord came out of the nation of Israel, right? Now, as you read here, uh, Revelation 12 and 17, it says, and the dragon was wroth with the woman, all right, which is the Israelites. I have likened the daughter of Zion unto a comely and delicate woman, okay, which is why he married us via his law. Okay, he made a covenant with us. We are his woman. I was wroth, the, the, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Right here, this is the seed of the serpent, which is now grown into a great dragon. Okay, now at this point, it's a, a, a seven-headed um, beast with ten horns. You know and, and so forth man but this dragon is representative of the seed of the serpent the Edomites the woman is the Israelites and that war between them two all right is is, is taking place all the way until right now okay and that's why the Lord is getting ready to have to defend us man because the 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 the, the, the serpent is coming with great wrath man so let's read this again, Genesis 3 and 15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and I will, and between thy seed and her seed, all right? We know enmity is hatred. It shall bruise thy head, meaning we will eventually bruise the head of the serpent, and thou shall bruise his heel. Now, if you know anything about an Achilles tendon's injury or an ankle injury, it's hard for you to move forward. Okay, you're, you're, you're down for a long time. And that's what happened to the nation of Israel via the bruise that Esau Edom put upon us, man. Okay, and as you read prophecy, okay, it was prophesied that this fourth beast, these devils, okay, would come and take us down, man. This is Daniel 2 and 40 in the fourth kingdom which is the fourth beast in which the Lord is ultimately going to return through the revival of that fourth beast, through that little horn, which is America. The fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron. This is the Roman Empire. For as much as iron breaketh pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, and it shall break in pieces and bruise. Okay, now who are the people that they eventually would bruise? You know, it would be all of the, uh, the nations, but ultimately the chosen seed, the Israelites. We could read about that in Daniel, the uh, seventh chapter. They seized us. They took us down. Let's get that in Daniel, the seventh chapter. All right. Daniel chapter seven and 25. And he shall speak great words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high. You see that? He wore out the saints of the most high. Now, what does this word wear out mean? All right. Bala, all right, to wear away, wear out, to constantly harass, man, to constantly harass, to constantly do things to, to agitate them, to take them down, put, you know, the poison in their food and their water and their entertainment, make, create laws to put them, you know, lock them up in jail for forever, man. Slavery, okay, this is what this devil did unto us. And it says, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and a dividing of times. But the judgment shall sit 
and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all nations, all dominions shall serve him and obey him. Okay? So basically this fourth beast, which would be ran by the seed of the serpent, would overcome the Israelites. As a matter of fact, let's get Revelation 13 real quick. Okay, this is Revelation chapter 13. Okay, and he's known as the dragon, the beast, you know, and everything else as well in this chapter. Okay. Revelation 13 and 6, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, the Israelites, and to overcome them. Okay, this is a fulfillment. He did that in a fulfillment of prophecy, bruising our heel, taking us down. It was hard for us to move forward. Okay? You you down for a long time when you got a heel, a heel injury, man. An Achilles heel injury, man. <laughs> it's through. You through. Mo mo most people don't even come back or are never the same after that injury. But the thing is, you can come back from that injury. But can you come back from a crushed head? Hell no. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And that's what Esau Edom did. He bruised us. He took us down, as the scripture said, man. Okay, let's get uh, 30, uh, Jeremiah 30 and um, verse 12. It says, speaking to the Israelites, For thus saith Yahweh, thy bruise is incurable. And thy wound is grievous. You see that? There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. And for a long time we had no healing medicines. But the Lord sent the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, to heal us up. And ultimately he's going to come with healing in his wings, man, and give us new bodies. Because the Lord brought us to a very, very low state for this devil to be able to take us down, man. Okay, he, he couldn't, we, we couldn't come in this captivity in those heavenly bodies or in those ancient bodies that we had, you know, um, you know, at the time of the sons of God, even the, the bodies David and the ancient men had, you know, the body is Adam and Adam, the Lord had to decrease us. All right. And allow this devil to ultimately um, take us down, man. You know, it was all prophecy. It says all thy lovers has forgotten thee. Okay. They seek thee not, for I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy. You see that? It says, Thy bruise is incurable. I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, man. And that enemy is Esau Edom. Because that would be the final captivity and the worst <laughs> of the heathen that the Lord will put over us, man. And with the chastisement of a cruel one, which is Esau, for the multitude of thine iniquity because thy sins were increased. And when you go to this story in Genesis 3 and 15, all right, the chosen seed, sins were increased by following after the philosophy of the serpent and not after the ways, all right, that led to life, which were breathed unto Adam and given to the woman, which is symbolic of Yahweh Shai and the church. We disobeyed the order, which led to the uh, serpent all right, um, being promised to take us down. All right, now this doctrine, okay, is 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 there, there's two sides into it. You learn about the blessings and the curse. Right now, we've lived out the curse. Now it's time for the blessings in which we'll 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 take you devils down, man. And then this part of it is getting ready to come into play because we fulfilled our role of having a bruised heel, man, of being taken down. Of being uh, uh, seized okay as the scriptures say the kingdom of heaven suffered violence okay but there's gonna come a day where we bruise thy head man crush thy head okay this is uh Luke 4 and 18 the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have appointed me anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he have sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives to recover the sight of the blind, 
to set at liberty them that are bruised to set at liberty them that are bruised man okay and let's look up this word for bruised shout out to the priest Tazama for uh, sending me this all right that word for bruised Strong's G 2352 throw throw to break, to break in pieces, shatter, smite through. And did not Esau, Edom, smite through the Israelites? He destroyed us, man. Okay, and he was given that authority through the Spirit. It was because of prophecy you devils were able to do this. Not because you're so high and mighty. The Lord used you to punish us, just like he used the Assyrian to, to punish us. Well, he used you Edomites to break us into pieces, all right, to beat us down. All right, to give to to uh, make sure the foods and and water that were readily available to us were poisoned, the entertainment poisoned, the education poisoned. We're bruised. All right, but this doctrine, all right, is sent to 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 bind up the brokenhearted, to heal and preach deliverance to the captives and to them that are bruised, man. To preach deliverance to the captives, the brokenhearted, to recover the sight of the blind, to put them. And that ancient spirit, man, that's why the Lord said he's going to uh, uh, build the waste cities, which is the tabernacle of David. Now, as Yahawashai is quoting Isaiah 61, what does it say here? Okay, he's, he's quoting this very, uh, you know, Isaiah the 61st chapter when we were reading Luke, the f uh, fourth chapter, right? Now, he's proclaiming, okay, the acceptable year, you see, and what does that entail, man? As you keep going down, it says, and they shall build, verse 4, and they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolations. And that's the house of David. Okay, and with the, with, with the house of David being rebuilt comes a mind frame, man, that has not been in Israel for ages, man. That's why they're so terrified. That's why when we read, you know, uh, 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 he that leadeth into captivity shall go to, uh, into captivity. They try to remix it. They try to lie on what the scriptures are saying, man. And they try to tell us we're we're bugged out when they're the ones that are bugged out, man, and don't understand the scriptures. See, we're comforted by reading, he that goeth into captivity, leadeth into captivity, shall go into captivity. That bugs you devils out. Now, see, you boasted and joyed in the American dream and how America was uh, built up and living here and being able to, you know, have what you have. But now you're on the flip side of that, which is you going into captivity. OK. And they shall repair the waste cities in the desolation of many generations and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and vine dressers. You're going into captivity. The sons of the aliens should be your plowman. What is a plowman? A car. A husbandman, a farmer working the land, yet not owning any of it. You see that? So these heathen are going to be our footstool. It says, but ye shall be named priest of Yahweh, men shall call you ministers of our God, ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves, man, as the scriptures say in Amos the ninth chapter, okay, the plowman shall overcome the reaper, where we were the plowman, as you bruised us, <laughs> and you were the reaper, but now we're going to be the reaper, and you're going to be the plowman, and you're not going to own a goddamn thing, okay, so going into how we will bruise your head okay we we went into how you bruised our heel you took us down man he wounded us with the wound of an enemy man and that was a that was a woo that was a big loss man for the nation of israel but now let's get into how we're gonna bruise your head okay and i don't want to go too deep but that was that was dope how when you read um luke the fourth chapter Okay, this the, the this doctrine is sent to uh, set at liberty them that are bruised, man. Because the bruise not only was it physical, but it was mental as well, man. He got our mind. You see, so to see us coming out of that dead state really fears and angers Esau, Edom, man. And this is that acceptable year, as you can see 
is going down. Now, the acceptable year does not say that this is the exact year, but it just means we're in that time, man. Okay? This is Romans chapter uh, 16 and 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach be with you. All right. Aman. So the Lord is going to bruise Satan under our feet, man, because he's going to be our footstool, man. As the scriptures say, our enemies will be our footstool. All right. And that starts under Yahweh Shai, man. Okay. Psalms 110 and 1. A Psalm of David, the Lord said unto my Lord, who's who's his Lord? Yahweh said unto my Lord, well, who's David's Lord? Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. <laughs> you see that? So once his enemies become his footstool, they will be our footstool as well, man. As the scriptures say, they will lick the dust. Psalm 79, 72 and 9, they that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him and his enemies shall lick the dust. And this is speaking of King Solomon, which is ultimately Yahweh Shai. Okay, because when you read this psalm, okay, it's a psalm for Solomon, but it entails what Yahweh Shai is going to do. Because so, uh, Solomon didn't do all of these things that, that uh, this, this psalm is talking about. So read this for you guys who don't believe in reincarnation and explain to me when is this going to happen. It talks about how uh, uh, the king's son, which is Solomon, is going to bring salvation to the to the meek man. He's going to break in pieces the oppressor. Solomon didn't do that. He just wanted to bring that out. This is Isaiah 49 and 23. And king shall be thy nursing fathers. That means captivity. You see? And their queens thy nursing mothers speaking of the heathen because Israelites didn't have queens we had princesses okay the heathen had queens Esther was a queen under the heathen rulership they shall bow down to thee with their faces towards the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet meaning they would be our footstool under our dominion it's not literal where they're going to lick our feet why would you want a heathen licking your feet this is symbolic of them being under our feet, our footstool, man. As the Lord, as David said, uh, Moab is my washpot. Over Edom will I cast my shoe. You see that? Over Edom will I cast my shoe. Let's get that real quick. Psalms 108 and 9. Moab is my washpot. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe. Over Philistia will I triumph. It means basically... And this is David speaking when he sat on his throne. These are the main enemies who he rejoiced over having down, man. So how much more us? But over Edom will I cast out my shoe, meaning you will be our footstool, man. Okay? And um, finally, what's this? Uh, Micah 7 and 16. The nations shall see and be confounded at all their might, and they shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. <laughs> that serpent is going back to his original state, man, on his belly. They shall move out of their holes like worms, like the uh, worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God. They shall fear because of thee. You see that? So this is the, the, the plight of you heathen, mainly you Edomites, man. Okay? Now going to, uh, let's get um, Psalms, the 68th chapter going more into the crushing of the head this is psalm 68 and 21 but god shall wound the head of his enemies and the hairy scalp of such as goeth on steel in his trespasses as the scriptures say he trespasseth by wine god shall wound the head of his enemies you see that now how is he going to do that when yahweh shall returns with the chariots to take down this wicked ass captivity and give us new bodies and we're going to come down once we're beamed up and crowned we're going to come down and we're going to find you out of those holes man where you devils and elites are hiding and we're going to enslave you that's what the scriptures say and eventually you will be utterly obliterated and crushed let's get Habakkuk let's 
look at Habakkuk chapter 3. And this is speaking of the return of Yahweh Shai, man. When, when the Lord sends uh, Yahweh Shai and the Holy Host, Michael the Archangel, and, and, and the rest to defend us and to tear down you heathen, man. This is our military, our defense, our army. Habakkuk 3 and 12. Thou didst march through the land in thy indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. Woo! Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for the salvation of thine anointed. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation unto the neck. Say la. And once you get your enemy's neck, he, he's done. You got him. Okay, so thou woundest the head. Let's look at this word, woundest. Machat. Machataza. Machataza. Never heard of that one. It's a nice Hebrew name. Machataza. Okay. To smite through, shatter, wound severely. To shatter, shattering. You see that? This is what's going to come to you, to you Edomites, to you heathen, man. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Psalms 110 and, and 5. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath, man. And this is ultimately what's coming. And who are the kings of the earth right now? Who's the main king? Esau, Edom. Okay? So it says, Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, which is associated and synonymous with what? Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed even for the salvation of thine anointed thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked by dis discovering the foundation unto the neck say la and once that happens it's no, you know once we ultimately get you Edomites and prophecy is fulfilled after that a thousand years you, there's no healing to this wound that you're going to uh, uh, receive okay Nahum 3 and 19 there is no healing of thy bruise and this is speaking of America Babylon the great Esau Edom man all of you Edomites thy wound is grievous all that hear the brute of thee shall clap the hands over thee for upon whom have not thy wickedness passed continually you Edomites man okay you're the modern day Nineveh okay and when this happens, all of the heathen nations are going to glory, man. As the scriptures say in Isaiah 14, Isaiah the 14th chapter, in 14, as a matter of fact, start at 16, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and that did shake kingdoms? that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof? Is not he destroying Iran right now? Is not he destroying Iraq? Is not he all over the planet Earth destroying shit, lying on people? The Edomites is doing this. It, it, Israel, okay, Babylon the Great, the, the NATO, the EU, they've done nothing but rape, rob, murder, bomb. But see, now they're getting fed up with one another, man. All the kings of the nations even all of them lie in the glory everyone in his own house you see all of the heathen nations will eventually be able to enjoy a righteous rulership but thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch as the raiment of those that are slain thrust through with the sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet thou shall not be joined with them in burial see the kings and the nations they're all going to be buried their rulerships are going to be buried but you won't be joined with them in that burial because eventually they'll be able to, as the scriptures say, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. You'll never have a lot. After that a thousand year period, you're going to be done, son. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities man colonizing every goddamn thing man for i will raise them will raise up against them saith the lord of hosts and cut off from babylon the name 
and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. You won't be able to produce seed anymore. Okay? This is this is the uh the this is the um the heritage of the heathen. This is what's coming unto you. Okay? Job 18 and 18, he shall be driven from light to darkness and chased out of the world. He shall neither have son nor nephew among his people, nor any remaining in his dwellings. <laughs> this is Psalms 21. Psalms 21 and 10. Their fruit shall thou destroy from the earth and their seed from among the children of men. For they intended evil against thee and imagined a mischievous device which they are not able to perform. Okay? Therefore shall that make them turn back when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings. All right, the missiles, which get ready to be shot. Okay, but ultimately, you bruised our heel, but we're going to bruise your head. Okay, we're going to crush your head, man. When Yahawashai returns. Okay, and that word bruise, as we showed you, is shawap. To crush, to seize. Okay, to seize, what does seize mean? To take something. Okay, and the scriptures say the saints shall take the kingdom, man. To take hold of forcibly. You see that? As the scriptures say in Psalms 149. It says in 8, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written this honor have all his saints praise you the lord man and we'll end it off here in revelation 13 because vocab malone had a, a very tacky and ugly breakdown of this revelation 13 and 9 it was all oh boy it was sad listening to him trying to break this down if any man have an ear let him hear the context of this whole chapter is the edomites okay this beast which started with a leopard, which that, that's associated with the Greeks in Daniel the seventh chapter, which was the start of this very rulership and beast system that we see today. Okay, doing all sorts of wickedness and eventually paying for what they did. All right, and at the very end of their rulership, they would bring the, the, the chip. That's all, this is what this is talking about. America, the revival of the Roman Empire, all of that is spoken of in this chapter. Lord willing, we'll, we'll do a lesson on that whole chapter to show you the context of what this was talking about. Because the scriptures is telling you all of the wickedness he's done, how he bruised our heel, took down the nations, lied on us, did all of these different things. But the scriptures gives you an insight right here in verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patient and the faith of the saints. Let's look at this word captivity. Dude, it's, that, it's that simple. Strong's G 161. Achmalosia. Achmalosia. A captive. You're going to be a captive. You're going to be a slave. You're going to be through. You're going to be taken. You're going to be captured. Okay, and you you're gonna be elected for for to fulfill prophecy, man. So, with that, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I just wanted to go into how you know um, we were bruised, man. You know, we we our heel was bruised, but ultimately we're going to uh, bruise your head, which is you know ultimately that crushing that Yahweh Shai talks about. When he said, I will bruise the... Let's read that one more time. Psalm 68 and 21. But God shall wound the head of his enemies and the hairy scalp of such as go on still in his trespass. Let's see if the, they knew to link that up with Genesis 25. Nah, I don't know. They didn't link it. I remember reading a commentary that did it, but when you read Genesis 25, it says Esau was red all over like a hairy garment. Not that he came out all hairy. All right, now when he grew up, he had a, you know, a lot of hair on his body, but that was speaking of the garments 
um, that they would die back then in red, but he was red all over like a hairy garment, but God show uh, wound the head of his enemies in a hairy scalp, okay, of such as goeth upon trespasses. And that word for wound, machatazah, to smite, you know, to shatter, that's crush, man. So you Edomites are through. Shalom.